Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me. For me today, guys, it is Sunday, September 17th, 2023. It is 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record, guys. I'm about seven days away from stepping foot on a big old boat headed to Bermuda. Praise God. And praise God for each of you to join me and just get in this word, this devotional, uh, the 365 daily reminders of Jesus' love for us out of our daily bread. Guys, just praying you are having an amazing day. Hallelujah. Today's title, Scattered Fruit. I glanced ahead at this one. I thought it was going to talk about us. I thought it was going to talk about the body of Christ, the believers, as far as scattered fruit. But it doesn't. But that title alone is speaking to me. Um, scattered fruit, not us guys, although we are. Anyway, um, our studies today, folks, the important part, John, Gospel of John, chapter 13. We're not in 14 or 15 today. We're in 13, verses 3 through 15. And that's the account of uh, Jesus white, uh, washing the disciples' feet. That's why I've got today's background. He, mm, mm, mm. Man, just think about that. Jesus knew. He knew what was just around the corner. And yet he took off his own gown, side around his waist, tied a towel around his waist, different translations. Just, guys, it doesn't matter what Jesus is wearing, in my opinion. The fact that he got down on his knees, his hands and knees, and washed the disciples' feet, knowing they would deny him, they would betray him, they would not stand by him, they would throw him under the bus. They would, Guys, he still washed their feet because back then, if you want to get theological about it, if your feet were clean, you were clean. Many times in the Old Testament, the priests, they would they would go to the bath bathhouse and they would fully cleanse themselves. But before they could walk in the temple, there would be a foot bath there. They would wash their feet because they would gather a little dirt from point A to point B. You understand, guys? Just enter in the presence of the Lord, cleansed. We're talking spiritually clean. Um, so John 13, 3 through 15. And our study, study uh, lead off verse, I'm sorry, guys. Our lead off verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. And this is what Paul tells the church in Corinth. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. And think about that. Here's Paul following Jesus, his example. Who did Jesus follow? He followed the Father. We've learned that in some of our studies. Jesus said nothing or did nothing without conferring with the Father first. The other day, what would Jesus do? Pray first. Let this stuff speak, guys. Put all these things together. This isn't just a one-day daily devotion to get you through today, although it will. You take all this stuff. You put all it together. You, you know, Holy Spirit buffet of the Word of God. And this man, is awesome. Vernon Grounds writes this today, folks. The story is told of a Christian serving in the armed forces who was home on furlough. I don't know if that's Hacksaw Ridge or not. Goodman, that guy. I forget his name. Great movie. Uh, he was rushing to catch his train when he ran into a fruit stand on the station platform, knocking most of the piled up apples to the ground. Man, he was in a hurry to get home. <laughs> the young boy who operated the stand tried to pick up his scattered fruit, but was having difficulty. The apologetic serviceman put down his luggage and started collecting the apples. That's beautiful. He polished each one with his handkerchief and put it back on the counter. Not only did he pick up his own mess, guys, he made it better than it was when he, you know what I'm saying? He, he polished, he didn't apologize him apples. He didn't have to pick up the apples. He didn't have to, but that was the Christ likeness in him. Um, so impressed was the boy that he asked gratefully, soldier, are you Jesus? Shoo. With a smile, the soldier replied, no. But I'm trying to be like him. God, that man, are we saying that or not? Are we saying it? Sometimes as we hurry about our own responsibilities, we become too busy to care about other people. But we must remember that Jesus urges us to show kindness and concern for our fellow travelers. He set the example for us in John 13 by being a servant. We need to take the time to be helpful also. Would anyone ask of us, are you Jesus? And could we honestly respond, no, I'm not Jesus, but I'm trying to be like him. I mean, guys, I'm, man, if somebody asked me that, I would probably break down in tears and just nonstop give God praise and glory. 
But I, that, that, that would be my response. No, I'm not Jesus. He lives in me. Christ now lives in me. And I'm trying to be like him by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. Not on my own will, not on my own accord, because this flesh can accomplish nothing. This flesh profits nothing. That's the word of God. But just total surrender and submission to him. I, I think we talked about submission yesterday, guys. Submit to him. Let God do his thing in you and through you for his glory. Let people see Christ in you. Amen. Christ-like kindness can open the door for a heart-touching testimony. Yes, it can. Amen. Thank you, Vernon Grounds. Don't know if I mentioned your name, brother. And our quote today, nothing is more attractive than being like Jesus. And that's, well, I don't know. That's a, that's a reminder of Jesus' love for us, especially if you read our studies again. There he is washing the disciples' feet. But guys, does anybody see Christ in you? We got to ask ourselves these things. Are we trying, are we trying on our own will according to this flesh to be more like Christ? Because that ain't going to happen. That's just not going to work out. We just got to totally let Christ, that the Holy Spirit that dwells in us and through us to make us more like Christ every single day, guys. Even if just little by little, day by day, these 24-hour increments, we become more like Christ. And the Bible says we do until that day we become just like him. But understand something. I was talking to my brother at church today. I understand one thing right now. If you are born again, if you have surrendered your life to Christ and made him the Lord of your life, you are already, you're already one third perfect. You are already one third just like Jesus Christ, the same spirit, guys. That's positive affirmation right there. The word of God will back that up. Physically, these physical bodies we got right now, these earth suits, these earthen vessels that we're dwelling in, they will never be like the earthen vessel Jesus had. That was he. Even though he's fully man, fully God, that that he was flawless because he was without sin. So that flesh that he walked around in had no sin in it. And then, of course, our soul was God. That's a whole different other lesson, you know, your, your emotions, your feelings, and things like that. But just knowing that a third of you is already in the exact image of Jesus Christ, your spirit being, once you're born again and made new. So guys, this is beautiful. We're just picturing this guy, you know, he could have. He could have said, sorry, kid, and kept on running to catch his train. But no, he stopped, turned around. Oh, was he going to catch his train? Um, I think he was I think he was running for his train. Yeah, running to catch his train. He may have missed his train. He may have missed his train to, to, to be an example of Jesus Christ. And we've said it before. You may very well be the only example of the love, the compassion, the understanding, the patience, the gratitude, the forgiveness, the thankfulness, the patience, the self, all of these holy spiritual blessings, God. You may be the very only example of Jesus Christ that somebody else will ever know. That's awesome. I pray every day that God would send somebody to me that wants to know the love of Christ, how they know the love of Christ through the love that's in us. That's how. So scattered fruit, we kind of are, guys. We're kind of those, we're kind of those apples on that that platform, you know. And God's picking us up and polishing us off and setting us back up on for display. Going to catch somebody's eye, catch somebody's attention, and they're going to pick us and want to know a little bit more about that piece of fruit. Why it's so beautiful, and that's when it's our chance to to tell them about the love of Christ. So, guys, beautiful one. Thank you so much for joining me. And until tomorrow, Monday, the eighteenth getting closer and closer to wildlife Mondays. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we will see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.